Hello and welcome to this review of Old Overholt Straight Rye Whiskey. This is the 80 proof 3 year age chill filtered which was replaced by the new red cap slightly altered label 86 proof non chill filtered 3 year age Old Overholt. It says from Old Overholt Distilling but it's actually um, Claremont, Frankfort, Kentucky. It's actually Beam Centauri. So the Jim Beam Company bought Overhaul years and years ago. There's all kind of variants. I know at Dorgnax and other stores in New Orleans, they're in, deeper into New Orleans, closer to New Orleans. There's the uh, 100 proof bottled and bond. Then some people get 114 proof, uh, 11 year age. I think there's a 15 year age, but it's only certain states and um, there's no website listing. They don't even have that old website called The Olds where they had Old Crow, Old Overhaul, and Old Granddad. That's gone. So uh, Beam Suntory does nothing to promote this or even give you information about it. So unfortunately, I cannot. Since 1810, that's a true story. They started distilling this in 1810 in Pennsylvania. But that distillery has been shut down and it's all dilapidated in Pennsylvania today. It's See, like they have the website here, theoldswhiskies.com, but it's not functioning. You don't even bother looking it up. Distilled in Kentucky. So it's it started in the Keystone State, but it's you can tell it's a Beam Suntory bottle. They have brown and clear bottles like this. Broad shoulders. Same as Old Crow. Julius Kessler blended whiskey. Never before I had it. Thank you, David Garlapede. My friend picked this up for me. He said it was the last bottle at Rouse's. Now, when I first saw, because I had seen this for a couple of years, maybe more than a couple of years at Walmart, I just kept saying, I'm going to get it later, and it was always $15.65. It was like the same price all the time, and um, still the same price. Then I went over there last year and I saw the red cap. I didn't think anything of it. I just said, well, they changed the label. I know companies do that. So I bought it. And then I started looking up video reviews for YouTube, on YouTube. And they had, I noticed after a few minutes, 86, 80, 86, two different proofs. And I started researching. And I said, oh, they changed it. So I went back to Walmart and said, let me find an 80 to black label because sometimes I'll have older bottles on the shelf gone. So... He rescued me. Thank you. I paid him back. So um, I'm going to do, obviously, a taste challenge between the new Red Cap 86 non-chill fil filtered versus the Black Cap. I was trying to beat the air conditioner. I didn't make it um, 80 proof chill filtered. All right. Anyway, try to work around that noise. That's amber. My typical rye whiskey if it was... Woodford Reserve or Dickel Rye be the same general color. Uniform alcohol eggs is mass produced. I mean, it's not an art with these companies. It's an algorithm. They do it to perfection and every batch is supposed to be the same, probably will be the same. Lots of sweet, savory oak. It's like white oak that's been soaked in bourbon, but of course not bourbon, it's rye whiskey. Bourbon is 51 or more percent corn. Straight rye is 51 percent or more rye. Aged in new, never before used charred oak barrels for at least two years. This one's three years, so they're going over the minimum. But it smells uh, like that, um, more pep peppery and minty. Think of it as like bourbon is a regular cigarette and rye whiskey is the menthol. <laughs> but it's kind of like what it is. All right. Nice smelling. Be a very interesting taste challenge. Will I be able to tell them apart? I would hope so, but I don't have an enormous amount of confidence in that.
as with all the Beam Suntory products, it's super clean. <laughs> no badness to it. Now, you might say, but they're bland. They don't have any outstanding eccentricities or anything. Well, okay, that's not what they're shooting for. They're shooting for like a solid, solid state, solid state production. Um, high fidelity in a mass produced mass production sense of the of that term. I mean it's these rye whiskeys taste like um, to me I like rye whiskey more than um, bourbon I'll tell you why. To me bourbon oftentimes tastes like yellow or white hominy corn grits. And I eat enough of that. I'm not necessarily in love with drinking a liquor or tasting a liquor that tastes like corn grits. Although they, you know, they're very good bourbons and everything, and that's what they're made out of corn. So mostly corn. Could have wheat. Could have rye. Could have barley. Malt whiskey. Malt. This could be 100% rye. And they have some of those. But as long as it's 51% and aged like I said in that, those parameters earlier, then it's straight rye whiskey. Um, I just like the uh, sort of uh, Wrigley's Double Mint gum type flavor. It's just like a double mint flavor. It's um, Rye whiskey in a, in a way is sort of like a starlight mint. And I do like the minty aspects of rye. And Sazerac, they claim their rye is the ideal product for a Sazerac rye cocktail. All right. Medium body is kind of soft in the mouthfeel. It's hard to describe. You just have to feel it. Um, it's it's a, mod, a moderate drop off. It doesn't drop right off. Doesn't linger to where it becomes off-putting, sort of a dry product, which probably would also work well with highballs and cocktails, so, um, which I don't ever drink. I don't always drink stuff neat at room temperature. I don't, I don't even use ice. Now, that might be something. Could be a, a point of ridicule or whatever, but I just rather drink it at room temperature neat and have that control like everybody every other liquor I drank at that same that same protocol so it's fine uh, is it as good as the 86 proof non chill filter I don't think so I guess they improved it they wanted to step up I think they could step up more by giving us a website with some information just because people that are into this drinking whiskey and tasting it they like to read about it learn <sighs> with first-hand information not well this they say all of all such and such just the company itself or at least the brand holder can give us some information but anyway I don't have much confidence that's gonna have confidence that's gonna happen but it's an old brand I checked the trademark and it really was first used in commerce in 1810 um, they got the old designation registered in the United States Patent Office like the new ones would just say R with a circle around it it is in the old, oh good, it shut off the old way of doing it for old overhaul. It's not world class or outstanding or anything like that, but for a less than $16 bottle, and you could probably find it around. The supply is probably not totally dissipated. They probably have some back stock somewhere here and there. You may have to search. I guess it's a pretty good seller though because. It was like black cap everywhere and then red cap and then only red cap. So it must there must be pretty good turnover. Unlike some beers I've been looking at like KBS from Founders. <laughs> they put that on the shelf and the CBS oh CBS from like two years ago what was that door next? They had CBS on the on the shelf collecting dust. I say, oh man. Ten years ago it had been gone in two hours. People have been running to the store to get it. 
and putting pictures on social media. I got my CBS. I got my KBS. Now it's like, uh, but this stuff seems to move, and I guess it's more of a uh, go home after work cocktail producing product. So there you got your, um, and it's inexpensive. See, so that's why you got your major turnover, as you get with um, George Dickel Rye. <laughs> Woodford Reserve Rye, Jack Daniels. I don't know, Jack Daniels Rye, I don't know if that caught on. So I better not bring that up. Seems I have faded. Uh, but anyway, score. And I have a, a Canadian rye. 95%, was it 90 or 95% rye? I have to go recheck. The Northern Harvest Rye from Crown Royal. That'll be the next one coming. Um, I don't see anything wrong with this, and I see a lot right with it. So when I taste a rye whiskey or any kind of whiskey that's all or almost all upside and very little downside, you know, I'm going to give it a high score. So one more sip, then we're going to rate it. I love the mintiness, but I mean, that's just the style. Um, a lot of grain. It's so grain-oriented rye bread. I might go get a Reuben sandwich. <laughs> I'm just saying that. I'm not going to really do that. Um, it's simple in a way, but in a, another way, it's a classic, and it's a great product. I don't see why you go lower than a 93. A most excellent product. So, les les bon ton relay. A 9.3 out of 10. An A rye whiskey, straight rye whiskey. And they, they have other ryes that are not straight rye, by the way. Um, oh, George Dickel. Look at the bottle carefully. It doesn't nowhere does it say it's a straight rye. Makes you start to think. And I'm gonna end this review by saying, no, I can't say that. I was gonna say look at the website and get some information. I'll go to the distillery and take a tour. No, I can't say that because they don't know. All right. So anyway, just get your own bottle and make your own video review, and I'll watch it.